Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is an equipment video and I'm going to basically answer a question that I get asked quite a lot of the time and uh, that question is, do I use a tripod for wildlife photography? And the answer is yes and no. Yes I do sometimes, sometimes I don't. And it will really depend on the type of photography I'm doing, uh, the type of equipment I'm using and what sort of animal I'm photographing. So um, if I'm um, in a, a hide and I'm fairly static and the animal's coming to a position that's a static position, so I'm not moving around too much, then yes, I will probably use a tripod because it keeps the weight off my arms, especially if I'm using a heavy lens. If I'm photographing an animal, say like a red deer, and I'm stalking through a, a large area and I'm moving a lot, then I may well not bother with a tripod. It will also depend on light levels, of course. So if the light levels are dropping, a tripod is not essential because we're still going to be using a fast shutter speed to freeze that motion of the bird but, or the animal. But let's say the animal isn't moving around a lot. I can, as the light levels drop, I can get away with shooting with a slightly slower shutter speed on a tripod than if I was hand holding, which means I can use a lower ISO number and get a slightly better quality image. Now it's not going to make a huge difference because I'm not going to be able to shoot with a super slow shutter speed because, you know, animals move. But it means that if the animal's not super fast and it's standing or sitting still, uh, I can use a slightly slower shutter speed and I haven't got to worry about so much camera shake because I'm using a tripod. So that's uh, when I would use a tripod. If I'm uh, photographing an animal that's moving around a lot, let's say I'm stalking a red deer, for example, then I would probably do that handheld because uh, it's just something else to carry and you know, lenses are heavy enough as they are. Uh, and then last but not least, it would very much depend on the equipment I'm using. Now, if I'm using this lens, which is my 200 to 500 millimeter zoom lens, then I can hand hold this no problem at all because it's not too heavy. But if I'm using my 600 mil prime, which is much bigger, much heavier, then again, I'm wanting to put that on a tripod. If we look at the image of these two snow buntings, uh, this picture was taken uh, using a tripod and uh, my fluid head. And uh, the reason I did that was because I was using my 600 millimeter prime lens and that's really heavy. And the other thing is I knew pretty much where the snow buntings were gonna be because we'd scattered some seeds down and um, pre-focused on that area. So I didn't need to walk around a lot and I didn't need to maneuver the camera uh, quickly either. So having the camera on a tripod gave me the extra stability uh, I needed, plus the fact um, it's also a lot more comfortable because you're not trying to hand hold this really heavy lens. This picture of a common turn uh, was a completely different situation. I was using my 200 to 500 millimeter zoom lens. So firstly, that's a lot lighter. And secondly, common turns are really quick. When they're flying, they're very maneuverable and they're very quick. So to track uh, a common turn in flight, it can be done uh, using a tripod and a gimbal head or a fluid head, but I find that uh, hand holding is a lot easier. So in this case, because the lens is uh, not as heavy, and because the, the animal I'm photographing is much quicker and more maneuverable, I'm using uh, a handhold, I'm hand holding the camera uh, and that suits that particular situation. The question that's more important when it comes to using a tripod is not so much the tripod you're using, but the head. Now, I don't generally use a normal traditional tripod head when it comes to wildlife photography. So things like a pan and tilt head or a ball head are not great because they don't give you enough free movement to pan with the action of a moving animal. So I tend to use either a gimbal head or a gimbal type head or a fluid head. Now this is the Amanfrotto gimbal head and it's a U-shaped bracket and it gives me movement from side to side and also up and down. So I can pan, tilt and um, follow the action of that animal. And as long as I've got the tension uh, correctly set, the, when I let go of the lens, it will just stay sitting there. And then when I wanna move it again, I've got that movement. And if I'm only doing stills photography, then these are a great option. And lots of gimbal heads are just a U, uh, instead of a U shape, they're an L shape. Now, the thing is, I do a lot of wildlife filming now as well. So I tend to use more often a uh, fluid head, like one of these. Now, the beauty of a fluid head is you can put extra tension on that head. So it means I can go for a really smooth panning action when I'm videoing a moving animal. And I can tension it from the top and tension it from the bottom. 
Uh, so I can do an up and down pan and I can do a side to side pan. So it's a really good option for wildlife. And then if I take all the tension off, then I've got free movement. If I'm doing stills, I can use it as a gimbal head. I'll take all that tension off. So for me, because I do wildlife filming as well as, as stills photography, I generally go for the, um, the fluid head because I can move it from side to side quickly, up and down quickly. And then I can put the tension back on again. So I've got a slow pan in action. If I was only to do stills photography, then the gimbal head is fine. So the, the options are, and I would say this would be my recommendation, if I only do stills photography, I'd probably go for the gimbal head because it's a slightly smoother action than the fluid head when you've taken all the tension off. If I'm doing both uh, filming wildlife, uh, so video in wildlife and stills, then I'm going to pick the fluid head. And this is a Manfrotto fluid head, but there's loads of different uh, makes on the uh, models on the market. And I've got the Manfrotto um, gimbal type head. Uh, so that's what, that was my recommendations. Um, as I say, you don't always need a tripod for wildlife photography, uh, but they do help in certain situations. It's pretty much essential for wildlife uh, video work because you want that smooth, shake-free movement. Uh, and um, that's, I think, about it really. Um, yeah, so uh, I hope um, this is helpful, this video. I hope you found it enjoyable. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, if you can consider subscribing, that would be great. And if you do subscribe, press the little bell icon and that will should, you should, should tell you when my next video is uploaded. And if you can give the video a like, that would be great. And any comments you've got about the, the gear you use in terms of wildlife photography or wildlife photography in general, if you can put it in the comments section below, that would be great. So yeah, thanks for watching guys and I will speak to you on my next video. Bye for now.